Now at 10 o'clock, Hattiesburg school district leaders are shedding light on the dangers of speeding in school zones as the city considers new technology to punish people who disregard the law. Plus, state lawmakers want to change the way education is funded here in Mississippi, but not all of them are on the same page. We'll explain. And the weather for tonight is not looking bad, but we could see fog as we go towards tomorrow morning. We'll explain more and talk about Friday's storm threat coming up. But your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in. Thanks for being here on this Wednesday night. I'm Michael Clark. Hattiesburg Public School District leaders and city leaders say speeding in school zones is a major problem. The city of Hattiesburg is currently considering cameras that might help officers crack down on offenders who put children in danger. Our Trey Howard has more tonight. Coming out of the city of Hattiesburg's final town hall meeting last week about proposed drone usage for HPD and fire departments to cameras identifying uninsured drivers, Mayor Toby Barker made clear what is at the top of his list. For me, I think speeding in school zones is a top priority. The proposal would see cameras added to school zones to help monitor drivers' speeds through those areas that the district says students use frequently. So our students at Hattiesburg Public Schools uh, typically cross the street twice a day. Um, they cross when they're going to school in the morning and they cross uh, the street when they're leaving school in the afternoon. School leaders say some campuses in the district, like the one here at Grace Christian, sit just off of major highways and near neighborhoods and apartment complexes with a high volume of traffic. And while they are monitored by some volunteer crossing guards, the district says they still receive calls from parents about the speeding issues at school. During some of our monthly meetings with parents, parents have raised concern about uh, drivers speeding during um, school hours. One thing the district has done as far as next steps is work with the Hattiesburg Police Department in making sure that drivers are driving the correct speed limit, whether that's before, during, or after school hours. These cameras would help assist officers in stopping speeding drivers while on duty at the schools. Mayor Barker says it would take some more time and conversation before any action takes place. Uh, one, we've got a few months left in the school year. It will be a really good time to pilot something. Um, other things we probably need to flesh out a little more and kind of talk about logistics and, and get with the community a little more. In Hattiesburg, Trey Howard, WDAM 7, on your side. And as Trey mentioned there in that story, Hattiesburg leaders wrapped up a series of town hall meetings talking about some of the potential new technology that could help officers like those cameras. No decisions have been made yet, but conversations continue. Community feedback is also being reviewed. Stay with us for updates on the ideas. All right, now over to Patrick. We had a lot of fog last night. What do we have on tap for this evening and tomorrow? Yeah, I think we're going to see fog develop once again. I don't think it's going to be as as widespread as last night, but I still expect us to see fog. I think we're going to see it develop a little bit closer towards sunrise tomorrow morning. Right now, no fog out in Sumrall. Currently, it is 60 degrees out there. The winds are calm and it is a quiet night out at Express Care in Sumrall. As you can see with the visibilities, no fog being reported anywhere across the Pine Belt for tonight. We're all either right around 9 or 10 in the visibility department. As you can see, temperatures into the low 60s, uh, 60 in the Hub City now, 61 in Petal. It's 64 in uh, Purvis and Oak Grove and 57 in Foxworth. And as we go into tonight, we will see fog developing across the year. Again, a little bit more patchier in nature than compared to last night, but I still expect fog out there with temperatures dipping into the low 50s. Tomorrow afternoon, as you head home for those kiddos, uh, 80 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Definitely going to be a warm day, but we're watching Watching Friday very closely for the potential for some strong storms. I'll explain more in my full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. We'll check back with you soon. The way your hard earned tax dollars are used to fund education could soon change. Today, House members passed legislation that would get rid of the current Mississippi Adequate Education Program known as MAEP. Now, the new proposed formula is called the Inspire Act. It now heads to the Senate for consideration there. So why change the formula now? That's what a lot of people are asking. Well, some House members claim MAEP is too complicated. If the Inspire Act passes, each school district would get a little more than $6,600 per student. It would also give districts additional money for the number of low-income students and students with disabilities. 
One longtime senator called the bill a bad piece of legislation. Meanwhile, House members are calling it a big win for the state and public education. I could not be more thrilled that we've had an opportunity to change uh, a 32 year old uh, issue that has just managed to, to frankly, be a, a, an eyesore for us. And this, at this point, I think we're in a situation where we can move forward and, and, and make some really good uh, decisions and fund education the way it should be. They frankly say that their complaint with the existing formula is the existing formula requires more money to be spent on public education than they want to. It's just a very unfortunate day. It's a very bad piece of legislation. It's only good for the pro-voucher crowd. Senator Hob Bryan, who you just heard from, created the MAEP formula back in 1997. It's only been funded fully twice. The bill now goes across the hall to the Senate. Leaders at the Mississippi Department of Transportation also want some changes to funding. Executive Director Brad White tells us the department currently receives most of its state money from fuel taxes. He wants lawmakers to consider plans that would bring more money to the department through lottery funds, use tax funds, and gaming revenue to help improve roads and bridges across the Magnolia State. We feel like in today's economy, we kind of need a more diversified streams of revenue that would collectively help us make up the deficit that we've been running. Right now, MDOT leaders say they get about $80 million a year from lottery proceeds under the current plan. Another bill, this legislative session, would combine the Mississippi University for Women with Mississippi State. Senate Bill 2715 calls for the MUW campus in Columbus to remain open, but it would be called the W at Mississippi State University. The bill now goes over to the full Senate for a vote. If it passes there, it would go to the House. Officials from MUW and Lowndes County oppose the bill. Lawmakers are also still considering some bills that would revive the ballot initiative process. Both the House and the Senate have proposals that would reinstate the process, and both versions prohibit changes to abortion laws. Republicans have said abortion restrictions should be off limits, given the legislature's role in laying the groundwork for the U.S. Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Covington County Sheriff's Office is using a new software system that deputies say makes it easier to protect and serve there. The department has been using the system called Caliber for about two weeks now. It features several components like a jail tracker, computer-aided dispatch, and records. Deputies went through several training courses to make sure they knew how to use it. All of that works together. We can pull it up and it'll tell you the last call uh, within just minutes. So. If dispatch types it in, I can look on the screen and tell you what's going on. The sheriff says they hope to be compliant with the national incident based reporting system for the Federal Bureau of Investigation within three months. If you're looking to travel internationally, the Forest County Chancery Clerk's Office is now accepting passport applications. The Forest County Chancery Clerk started accepting those applications in February and leaders say it has already become a popular option for people so far. You can visit the Chancery Clerk building for passport help between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. and you don't need an appointment to apply. Since I've taken over as Chancery Clerk, we've tried to be progressive wherever, whether it's going to credit cards, to uh, go on to due process with our recording, and it's just another step for, for us to, to, to try to, you know, move along with the times. We'll have pricing information, a QR code, and everything you need to know before applying on our website, WDAM.com. The economy is expected to be a big part of the State of the Union, what the President might be highlighting on it next.